So, My Hero Academia Chapter 307 has officially been released in English. And also, we are on break next week. Well, this is the best time as ever to make a discussion video. So here we are. We're going to be discussing the most recent chapter of My Hero Academia and discussing whether or not Deku will be able to defeat or even kill Muscular. And we'll get into it right after the intro. Hit it! Hey guys, how's it going? It is your boy, Big Blue Drew 97 here, coming at you with another My Hero Academia manga chapter discussion. Discussion? Discussion. This time we are going to be discussing uh, basically sort of the ending of My Hero Academia chapter 307 when it came to Muscular and his realization that the person that he's about to fight now is. Deku. And before we get more into the discussion, uh, two things I want to bring up is that one, unfortunately, uh, due to whatever is happening with Hirokoshi, we are going to be on break next week, meaning that most likely we will not be getting the spoilers for 308 this week. We may be getting them next week, which is very unfortunate. Uh, we may still get the spoilers a lot earlier if that is the case. But it just depends, but most likely we're not going to get spoilers uh, this week, so unfortunately that is sad. But the other thing that I want to say is uh, subscribe to my YouTube channel. Yeah, um, we're growing fairly fast. Um, I would appreciate the subscription if you like this type of content, if you like the discussion, the spoilers, the reactions, and the reviews for my hero. Uh, subscribe to my YouTube channel to get more content like that. And without the way, let's get right into the discussion. So, chapter 307, uh, weirdly enough, uh, it is not a chapter focused on either Deku or Muscular solely. For the most part, we are focused on Yoshindo and him trying to convince civilians to go and stay in the facility, his academy, for protection. And even though that takes up a large portion of the chapter, and even though that is kind of like important for like the story building and like showing the effects of the Paranormal Liberation War arc on the people as well as the city, that isn't going to be the focus in this discussion. I could talk a lot about that, and by a lot, I mean very little. Little? Very little. Uh, Yoshindo was there. Uh, we see that he's still sort of two-faced, that he still puts on this act where he probably would have gotten a better response if he was himself because they view heroes in a worse light. And at least being honest with them would have been better. There's not really else you can really say to add upon that, but we can make a little bit more predictions on what's going to happen between Deku and Muscular. Because if you remember correctly, Deku two chapters ago basically had a conversation with the previous vestiges of One for All and about how he may or may not be able to kill Shigaraki and they wanted to know if they can. And Deku's basic answer to that was, well, it just depends. I'm going to try to save him, but it just depends. If it comes to that situation, we'll get there when we get there, but I'm going to try to save Shigaraki to best as he can. And with that idea flowing to his head, he also brings up the idea that he uh, fought certain villains and that those fights could have been differently if he knew their background and knew who they were, as we saw Muscular stay in an overhaul. And because of that, that could have been setting up for what we're going to be getting not this chapter but next chapter when it comes to Deku fighting muscular and the main crux of this discussion I want to talk about is that idea of like knowing your villain knowing their backstory and being able to deal with it and the situation at hand is will Deku be able to defeat muscular like permanently beat him down so he doesn't get up or would he not be able to do that and have to result to killing him and that's really where we're going to be discussing in this video so before we get into like why deku may or not be able to kill muscular we have to go back to their initial confrontation with each other it was during the uh summer camp arc where the villains invaded and the kids have to fight off the vanguard unit and Deku had to fight against Muscular because he was trying to protect 
Kota. And this started in chapter 74. The fight began and then the fight eventually came to its conclusion in chapter 76, 77. And from what we saw with this fight between Deku and Muscular, uh, Deku was definitely the underdog. Muscular was beating him down blow after blow uh, Deku was taking. And for the most part, Muscular dominated in that fight. Even when Deku thought that he got the upper hand and used his 100% Detroit Smash on Muscular, it did very little to nothing. And that is sort of a parallel to what even happened in Chapter 307 when we saw uh, Yo Shindo try to use his uh, Quake Quirk on Muscular and it failed miserably as well. And I think that there's a connection between this fight between Deku and Muscular and this fight between Yoshindo and Muscular because later on we saw that Deku was able to keep hammering and hammering at uh, Muscular to the point where Muscular eventually let his guard down and because Deku was always going 100%, 100%, 100%, he eventually went to 1 million percent Detroit Smash which isn't technically like a million percent, but it shows that he was going past his limits, showing that even though he may have 100%, he can always go further than that and get stronger and stronger. So as far as we know, that 100 million percent that he did now could actually be like the 100% that he can do now if he's not pushing himself. But that's not the point. Deku only won that fight is because he gave his all. He gave that 1 million percent while Muscular's guard was down and that's something that we have to realize because tying back into the fight between Yo Shindo and Muscular, Yo Shindo did not have that opportunity to uh, take Muscular off guard and that reasoning behind that is because Muscular may have learned from his fight with Deku because in this fight we saw that this is the most muscle fibers that we've ever seen him covering his body and he may have done that because of his fight with Deku. So Yoshindo, even though he was going all in, that might have been enough to defeat the old muscular, but because of the fight with Deku, this new muscular learned from that, and it's like, oh yeah, I just had to add on more layers, so now he wasn't being taken off guard. And Yoshindo almost died if it wasn't for the fact that Deku was able to come in and send him smashing away. And now here is where we get to the very interesting part of this chapter in chapter 307 at the end of it we get Deku uh, being recognized by Muscular and Muscular's like oh I know that voice it's you as Deku recognizes Muscular it's like oh you're Muscular yeah no wonder my danger sense was going off and this is very interesting because the moment before they actually meet with each other Deku was able to send Muscular flying with what we're assuming to be an Air Force smash. And this is very interesting because this means this is something that Deku didn't have in his initial fight with Muscular, meaning that he is significantly stronger now than he was with that initial fight. And with that in mind, uh, tying into what I think is going to happen, in, but I think that Deku now has a better chance of defeating Muscular easier and quicker without having to take Muscular off guard and that's because he now has unlocked more of one for all he has unlocked flow black whip and danger sense as well as he's able to produce air force smashes meaning that he doesn't have to get up and close to muscular to fight him so for the most part he's become stronger but on the other hand muscular has somewhat become smaller smarter and stronger as well because now he's preparing to use more of his muscle fibers to increase his strength so I think that this is going to be an even more even fight, but that's not the real issue at hand. Even if this is a more even fight, we still have this idea of Deku defeating Muscular and the idea of is he going to just straight up defeat him or is he going to kill him? Because at this moment right now, not only is Deku protecting Yo Shindo, but he also has to protect the people that are in the building. And Muscular is the type of person that's going to see the people in the building is like, ah, you're a hero. I'm going to attack them knowing that you're going to go and save them so that I can kill you even faster and harder and better because that's what I want to do. Muscular is the type of person that probably would never be able to change even if Deku were to learn his backstory. And that ties into what Deku was talking with the vestiges about in a few chapters go 
of whether or not he could kill Shigaraki and it depends and I think that when it comes to muscular even though Deku believes that a uh, one for all is a quirk meant to be saving I think muscular is the exception to that I think muscular has gone far down this hole of just anger and destruction and malice and chaos that even if Deku tries to understand and try to relate to him and try to connect with muscular muscular is just going to be craving bloodshed he's going to be craving destruction and I think that this may uh, be one of Deku's first challenges and show whether or not his conviction is true whether or not he's going to stick to the code of using one for all to save people and not to kill or if he's gonna come to a conclusion that yeah muscular isn't the type of person that can be saved so i have to put him down so the question that we may see in chapter 308 and in the next chapter after that is will deku be able to save muscular and defeat him or save the people by killing muscular because here's the thing this idea of heroism is the idea that yeah you shouldn't kill the villains but we've seen hawks kill the villains we've taken seen endeavor kill anomu multiple times will deku have to kill muscular i'm very iffy on that like story wise and when it comes to deku's character as far as we know now I do not think that he will be killing Muscular. I think that he will overwhelm Muscular with strength and his ability and his tactics and beat him down to the ground to a point where he can no longer hurt people, which will eventually instill faith in the civilians to eventually leave and go over to the Hero Academy. I can see him do that, but I can also see the idea that if he does kill Muscular, it would put more weight on the final fight between Shigaraki and Deku because if Deku was willing to kill muscular what would he do with Shigaraki so it kind of gives like this idea that if he does kill muscular now that it puts more tension in the fight between Deku and Shigaraki because we would not know if Deku would kill Shigaraki or not as if he didn't kill muscular now if we go into the fight with Shigaraki we would most likely know that oh yeah Deku isn't going to kill Shigaraki he wouldn't kill Shigaraki he would try to save him but if Deku were to kill Muscular now, you would look at that fight and you would question whether or not uh, Deku would be able to do that. And that would give it a little bit more weight. So me personally, I do not think that Deku is going to kill Muscular. I think he's going to beat him to the ground. But if he does kill Muscular, that would actually be better for the story. Because not only would it lead to uh, Deku possibly uh being characterized more and showing like the morality between hero and villains and really like what makes a hero what makes a villain and where the line can be drawn and also giving more weight into the final fight between deku and shigaraki showing that there is a possibility that deku could kill shigaraki or save him and that we as the readers wouldn't definitively know until the last moment so i think to sum it up Deku won't kill Muscular, which is what I expect. But if Deku does kill Muscular, that is kind of what I want because it has greater weight on the story. So yeah, that's all I really want to talk about right now. This is a shorter discussion because when it comes to this chapter, there isn't like a whole lot to discuss. I possibly could discuss more about uh, Deku and the potential fights that he will have. Uh, most likely, uh, Muscular isn't going to be the only uh, former villain that Deku is going to fight. Uh, most likely, he is going to fight Stain. He's going to fight Overhaul. He's going to fight Gentle. Or at the very least, he's going to have like a reunion with them. And eventually, it'll lead to him growing more as a person. And he may even like change the ways of the people that he fights. It just depends on what this fight entails and the conclusion of this fight. And from here, that will dictate what will go on in the future. But there's still a high possibility that after this, we won't uh, be able to see Deku for a little while. And we may even cut back over to uh, My Hero Academia, to UA, and focus on those students. There's still a lot that we just don't know. But this is just my initial thoughts on the chapter, chapter 307 of My Hero Academia. And what I think that Deku could and couldn't do when it comes to the fight with Muscular. So yeah, that's all I really have to say on this topic right now. Hopefully you enjoyed it. Hopefully you liked this video. Hopefully you liked the discussion. If you did, leave a like. Uh, leave a comment on what you think. Uh, I'm going to ask you a question. Do you think that Deku is going to kill Muscular? Or do you think that he's going to save him? 
uh, leave your thoughts down below, subscribe to my YouTube channel, do all of that cool jazz, and hopefully I'll be able to catch you in the next video. Goodbye!